Hello and welcome back to Factorio Tightening the Belt Mega Base Guide. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me. We are back where we left off. I've just done a little bit of hand crafting to prepare us to move on to the next step. So I've crafted some inserters as well as some more red science packs because I'd like to get some more research going and uh, we're going to start out with military just so we're prepared in case the biters do de decide to attack if our pollution hits them or they expand into it as I mentioned last episode. So we're going to research military. And I realized I didn't really go into the research that much last episode, so I wanted to quickly cover it here. Uh, it's fairly self-explanatory, but you can see here that there is a cost, and there's a time cost as well as an actual pack cost, and then a multiplier. And you can see um, the packs they take underneath here, this will show you uh, generally what types they take, um, but then when you click on it, it'll show the actual cost. So. How this works is, I, I consider these cycles. So this is essentially 10 cycles of this cost, this is the way I like to look at it. So it takes 10 seconds and one science pack to do one cycle, and this requires 10 cycles, right? So it's going to take 100 seconds and 10 packs. And this applies, you know, the, the same rules to everything. So in this case, it's, you know, 50 cycles, each one taking 30 seconds and a red and green pack. So that's going to be 50 red and green and then 50 times 30 seconds, uh, which see, which is a really long time, but it, it spreads out throughout the labs, right? So, you know, with two labs working, it's going to be twice as quick. With four labs working, it's going to be, you know, four times. The more labs you have, the quicker it's going to go. So it's not actually as bad as it may seem when initially looking at it if you get uh, some more labs up and running. And also, I did make one mistake last episode that about the canceling handcrafts. Uh, so if we get like all the gears going, um, if you actually shift to left click this, it will cancel them. Um, I was trying to shift right click because I had it in my head like that for some reason and it wasn't working, but it shift left click to cancel the whole queue. So we're gonna go down to finish the smelter and then we're gonna make a blueprint of it and expand it out. I've already got an iron set up. I just set up some electric miners here on this belt, pretty straightforward. And we now have iron coming down here, and it's on one side just like we want. So now we just need to have the inserters here on the outsides to be able to input the uh, fuel and ore. And I feel like I'm going to need more of these. So let's go ahead and do this. And then we'll need to get some coal over here. So. That is going to require a bit of belt, but luckily we do have some being made, so that should be fairly easy to uh, just get that coal over here. And we will end up building smelters to both sides of this. I probably will end up repurposing this one. Uh, don't th that, That's kind of one thing to cover, is don't be afraid to, to move things around and repurpose them if you need to, rather than just like being set in stone what you put places, because that can uh, can cause problems later. So for example, you know, this one is here, but there, there is room left to right once we clear out these trees. And I probably want the iron ones more to the left just because it's more of a direct route from the iron patch. And then the copper ones over here would be more convenient because, you know, the copper can just come straight out. So while this one is currently iron, because I didn't want to try to place it in these trees right now until I get a better way to clear them out, um, this one may be repurposed as copper later. So for now we're gonna do iron and then maybe copper next to it if it'll fit or copper to the right of it likely. And then we'll just turn this one into copper and then iron ones over here once we get a bit farther in. So uh, the, the next step here is going to be to place a couple miners here. Now I, I never like to share a coal line between power and other fuel um, thing, other things that require fuel, I guess would be a good way to say it. Um, because your power your power is most important, right, as far as fuel is concerned, because if you run out of power, then everything dies and you have some pretty major problems. And there's little bits of coal on the ground here for some reason. Um, where So sharing your coal line and uh, coal generators here, your miners, um, with other things, I typically find to not work well because, you know, if the other things start consuming more or... Um, or your coal's running low and then it has to share between the two, I find that that just causes quite a few issues. So um, I am going to separate these out and just uh, kind of do some powerful placement. Um, two, we may need more than two actually uh, because this will eat a bit of coal, but I'm actually gonna go backwards. I like to go backwards 
a lot of times from uh, from the destination to the source, essentially, uh, because I, I find it a lot easier to kind of, you know, work things out and, and, and plan out the route. You know, because I'm coming from the destination, so I know that this is, you know, th on this plane, this is where I need to be. And then I can kind of just look at this and be like, okay, I need to come down to here, and it's much easier for me. And we will sh we should go pick up, uh, we have 66, that may be enough. Uh, these rocks are in the way. Um, I think it might be kind of interesting to underground under it. We will need to, no, I can't, darn it. <laughs> I really wanted to leave these rocks here because I think they look really cool. Um, but we may just leave one here because they are a bit of a pain chop down until we get a better ax. So let's just do that. Bring him down here. And I did go a little bit far, but that's fine. And the coal will now merge on. Now, obviously, as we put more smelters, we will do this underground thing instead of just a straight line. Um, but that's how that will work. So let's get a few more power poles. Once we get the power poles in, I will blueprint this. Um, now, there's many different ways you could power pull this. Um, I'm just going to do something like this. It's like probably not the best, but it is at least somewhat symmetrical and it does power everything. Although I'm now realizing this is gonna drive me nuts because it's not, oh, they, they won't actually connect. Okay, so that's gonna that's gonna drive me a little bit insane that, uh, that there's like this gap here and then here there's not. It's a bit frustrating, but we'll just try to deal with it. Uh, okay, so these guys are going to just go into here and later on, once we get these steel power poles, we will be able to do much more clean power pole placement. Um, now this this bit of a mess here is going to cause some problems with uh, our, our perfect power pole placement. It's going to be a bit frustrating. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna do this. This is actually really quite quite annoying, um, having to do this. So let's uh, we'll do that. It's a little bit wonky, but you know, once it's going, we shouldn't be messing with it too much, so we won't really notice. And I will need, I'm guessing I'm actually out of wood for this. Not very often that that's the case, so chop down a few trees. Research is finished, so I'm going to go ahead and make a submachine gun as well as a little bit more ammo. Uh, the submachine gun is better because it does have a higher range by three as well as a faster shooting speed, more than double the shooting speed. So not only can you, uh, you know, start shooting the biters quicker, uh, because you know that it has higher range, but because uh, but then also it's going to be shooting faster so you can kill them better And this is still not enough power poles Now you may be wondering because I've had people ask me this before Why am I crafting them in ones when I could be crafting them in fives and it's again another personal preference thing mostly because when I craft in ones I get them like one at a time sooner because if I craft five I have to wait for all the uh, intermediates to be made. Um, whereas I craft in one, I can get one at a time and actually, you know, kind of be using them a little bit quicker, uh, or at least it feels that way, which uh, is almost as important. Um, so that's all connected now. And let's go ahead and grab a blueprint of this. Now, here's an interesting feature. So you can blueprint from the map. You can see here, if we're on the map and I zoom in with the scroll wheel, if we have radar coverage or I'm within coverage as well, um, e either or, or both, um, to reveal the area out, you'll notice, you know, this is the revealed area by the radar and this isn't. So out here, I can't zoom in, it's just fuzzy. But in the revealed area, if I zoom in, I can actually see what's on the map here. And I can, in fact, blueprint from this. So let's see, so that's gonna go under, and then that will do that. We may mess around with this a little bit but this is essentially what we want right here. So we're gonna do that, and we actually can place from the map as well, if, if we so choose. Uh, so that one, I would like it a little bit closer. So this underground is a little bit wonky. Let's go ahead and remove that. So if I go in here and I, I'm right clicking this, it may be hard to see because it's you know kind of zoomed out, but if you right click an entity, it will remove it. And if you left click it, it'll bring it back. So I'm gonna remove that and then I need to save it. And now this should work a bit better. I, I think I will put these right next to each other. I'm gonna space them out. I like to space them out because I always find that at some point I end up needing that one space in between them for some reason or another. And, uh, and spacing them out just makes that quite a bit easier. So this guy is going to underground into here. So this may not be super consistent, but 
at least it, it will work. So let's go ahead and do that. A couple more splitters would be good. And we'll just kind of start filling this out. So, you know, of course, we don't have bots yet to place this, but it will uh, it will expedite things by having um, something to follow rather than, you know, just doing it directly from memory because I can just draw over the lines here. We are out of belt, unfortunately. That other thing ran out of iron, which I probably should have replaced. I'd really like to get copper and iron up and running. We do have iron going here. You can see it's all backed up. And I'm just going to run over, hold F again, grab all of this, and the fuel, we probably will need more fuel than that. We we can't be uh, too worried yet because it, it will take a while for the fuel to get in here and actually saturate things, but I'm thinking probably we will need more fuel. Now once we do get the iron and copper going, we're going to want to get some science going. Typically. I would have four lanes of iron and four lanes of copper and then probably one or two, probably two lanes of circuits. And that would usually last me for quite a long time. However, in this base, since we are going to go mega base and it will be easier with a larger infrastructure, uh, we are going to go more than that. The plan actually that I have is to have dedicated smelters for the circuit builds um, because they do consume quite a lot of materials. Um, so we're going to have dedicated smelters going into the circuit builds and then uh, smelters for the main bus resources themselves. So I'm thinking probably like eight lanes of iron and eight lanes of copper just straight straight up is that and then uh, and then iron and copper separate to go into circuits and probably four lanes of circuits. If we may be able to get away with four lanes of iron and copper on the bus if we aren't having it consumed to the circuits. I may have to think on that, but uh, I, I think that that's an absolute minimum, the four of each, not counting what you would need for circuits. So we're just going to go ahead and place these guys down, get this guy almost up and running. There we go. And then we'll just need a bunch of inserters and we'll just place what we can. I do have power poles, luckily, so let's get that running. Again, one of these will be copper. This one on the right will be copper. The one on the left is iron currently, but will probably be turned into copper. And you probably noticed when I went to map view that there aren't any resources um, anywhere within the visible range. And that is due to RSO, a resource spawner overhaul, and that, that is intended. Uh, it's it's a bit of a, a disadvantage to it. I would like resources to be closer, but I'm willing to trade off the extra distance um, for the general overall spawning uh, method and, and, and kind of how they're arranged with RSO compared to vanilla. As I mentioned at the very start of the series, I am not a fan currently, in the current version of Factorio, I'm not a fan of how the uh, vanilla game generates resources for my personal tastes. Uh, I think it generates them far too close and it is very, it, it just, it does some really weird things with the patches. Um, so, I'm, I, like I said, I'm willing to trade off having to go farther for the initial resources in, uh, in order to have uh, what I consider better resource spawning in general. Uh, so, it is, you know, a little bit worrisome because we haven't found anything yet and these won't last that long. Uh, even if the, the richness there, if you mouse over them, it will show you how much is in each patch. Same with the oil. Uh, even though the richness probably will be fine for a while, it's the actual size that I'm worried about because that is going to, you know, determine how many miners we can put on it, which will determine how much, you know, throughput and actual smelting we can do off of that patch. So this guy, I'm going to run belt up until I run out. And let's just cut these trees down because I think we'll just kind of just plow straight through here. And I will need miners. I will need quite a few miners. Um, I'm going to tear this up because we do have enough copper and we're about to get that thing online. So let's go ahead and tear these up. Oh yeah, plenty of copper. Uh, I could start in the middle, but I think start, starting on the edges is better because if you start in the middle, you may end up with like, a, I don't want to say uneven, uh, kind of an uneven amount to where like, you know, your miner barely covers the patch or there's, you know, one extra spot that you have to then put miners on. Um, so starting in the middle like that is not great. Um, we're going to start on the bottom because that's closer to the smelter, which means less belt. 
Which means I did run that other belt too far, but it's easy to tear up. So let's kind of just draw this out. Should connect about there. And I'm going to move my ammo. If I just left click it and drop it and then hit tab, um, it'll switch. So tab will go through your weapons. Uh, and then also someone had a very good question in the comments of last episode. Uh, how do you bring up an item by mousing over it? Uh, if you hit Q, uh, now Q does clear your inventory if, or your cursor. If you have something in your cursor and you hit Q, it'll clear it. Um, however, if you mouse over something and hit Q, it'll bring that item up into your cursor if you have it in your inventory. Uh, and then even if there is something in your cursor and you hit Q again, it'll clear it and then you um, can hit Q to bring up a different item like that. So that's really, really handy to be able to quickly pull up items instead of searching your inventory for it. Now you can filter your hotbar as well as now in 0.16. Um, you can filter your whole inventory as well if you'd like. So if we go here, and by default it's middle mouse button. I have re, uh, rebound it because my middle mouse button doesn't work for clicking. Uh, but middle mouse button, click a slot, and it will allow you to filter it to whatever you want. So let's just filter this to yellow belt. Which means only yellow belt can go here. Now if I want to clear it, I just hit it again, and it's gone. Same with here. Uh, we can filter this to whatever, and then you can use your uh, number keys to pull up the item. So one, two, three, four, five. Um, and then instead of going like six, seven, eight, it's actually shift one, shift two, three, four, and five, uh, holding shift for this second half. And uh, and that can be really helpful. I will eventually sort my inventory, maybe. It's, it's a bit of a running, running joke that I just never sort my inventory. Um, I will try to do better this time. So let's just finish filling this out. These will be for the main bus. Uh, initially, I will probably get a little green circuit build going off of these instead of dedicated smelters, just because, uh, you know, getting, getting th there's, there's a kind of a fine line between developing a ton of infrastructure before actually like producing resources and just getting something going uh, well enough to then produce the rest of the stuff. You know, like if I were to spend all the time to set up every single smelter I need and then every single smelter I need for the circuits and then the main circuit build, you know, that could take hours, literally. I mean, you can already see how long this is taking. Um, so rather than doing that, I'm going to have a little build going off of these, which will eventually just be for the main bus and not go into circuits. I will have these feed a green circuit build and then later build a, uh, probably not too much later, but just a bit later, build a more full-fledged one. So that's enough of this on for now. I do want to connect up our coal. And it looks like we most certainly will need more miners. And speaking of which, if you click on a power pole, pull up your energy interface here, it shows you what's taken what, your production. Um, and this, uh, so satisfaction, th these these are, these are like, th th these are confusing. Um, so satisfaction is essentially how much you're capable of producing and production is how much you're actually producing. The, this has been mentioned many, many times um, that this is kind of counterintuitive. Um, so the production, you can see here, we're doing almost three quarters of our max. If this were full green, um, that like if this were all the way full, that means that we were actually like using all we can produce and then this bar would start to go down and change color. Um, but right now we're saying, you know, we can make 2.4 megawatts and out of the 2.4, we are um, producing and, and so also consuming this amount out of that, if that makes sense. It's, uh, it is a little bit confusing at first until you just get used to looking at it like that. So we're going to make some more miners because this coal is clearly not enough. This coal patch, unfortunately, is quite small. We're going to have a little bit of trouble uh, supplying what we need, especially our power off of this. So. We're gonna do that. Uh, let's go ahead and grab some iron. Any iron that's left in here. We can tear these up because it any that are working is just extra pollution. And we will need the space for miners as well. So let's do that. Let's dump a little bit in there. And we will go ahead and make some more inserters. So research is done. There are a few extra packs in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and research optics, which is lights. Now the Afraid of the Dark mod I'm using does add this balloon light, which will help um, provide even more light. 
Um, if I want to use it, I'm not sure if I will want to use it. Depends what it looks like and such. But uh, lights in general would be helpful for both me and you guys as viewers. Copper, we don't need nearly as much copper in the early game as iron, so four miners is probably sufficient for a good while. Um, it may not seem like it. Probably, probably we will need a bit more, but you really don't need that much copper right off the bat unless you just go like super heavy into circuits. I'm gonna just grab all this up. And again, if I hold control and left click, I can just grab all the iron out of these because these do hold a hundred buffer. Um, these will fill up to a hundred and then fill and then not be able to produce because they're full. But as you can see, there is a ton of iron in here. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and continue this. This blueprint is quite a lot of inserters, 96 inserters in here. You can see down there at the bottom, which is a lot. No wonder it feels like they've been making inserters for ever. So circuit builds. Let's start on a circuit build. There's many different ways, several different ways you can do circuit builds. And uh, again, and you'll hear me say this a lot, it comes down to personal preference. And this is one thing I love about Factorio is you can do it however you want. Now, is it gonna be efficient? Not necessarily. Does it have to be efficient? No, It it's really how do you wanna play. Now I'm gonna show you um, pretty much how I like to play, which happens to be efficient. Um, again, if you do not want to build builds like this, you are certainly not um, bound to do that. So these trees have got to go first off, and we are going to run out of a out of our pick here. So I'm going to pre-make one. Otherwise, we're going to be whacking the trees down with the with the walking stick here. And I'm just going to clear a little bit of a path. Uh, I think we will build circuits. We'll actually have to survey the area here. Uh, once we get turrets, I think we should go take out that base down there to the bottom right because they are going to start getting a little bit angry. I'd prefer to take them out before they take us out. So let's clear this out. Uh, we could build... Oh dear, yeah, it's it's getting close, especially as we start building machines down this way. Um, there will be several smelters to the left and some to the right. Uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think smelters... I feel like the main circuit build, I may actually end up wanting to build to the left because I'm just planning ahead um, for, for trains, right? Are there any patches we get, we'll probably need trains to get. Maybe we can belt it in if it's fairly close. But either way, it's going to be easier to build smelters like say up here or over here into circuit build than to build them over here because then we're gonna have to bring a train line unless there's patches like right here. We're gonna have to bring, bring a train line like over the power because this power is going to extend out and stuff we're gonna have to bring it like over here and stuff i think just having it here is going to be better in the long run um potentially but for now we're just going to build a little one here and it will move so we have we have assemblers let's go ahead and get some more on the craft now circuit circuits are a three to two ratio uh, meaning that you need three copper cable assembling machines to two circuit assembling machines. And we figure this out just by simple math and looking at the craft times, right? So this takes half a second and we get two cable per. So let's just, every half second we get two cable. These also take half a second, but they require three cable. So one to one isn't enough. Now, a lot of people do use one to one builds and it will work. It is close enough. Uh, later on, once we get into modules, uh, which I won't go into now, but once we get into modules, one-to-one -one will actually be beneficial. But for this build, we will go with the three to two just because it is correct for our level of tech. Uh, so we figure this out because if we then double this, that means every half second we need six cable, right? If we're doing double this amount, then that means that if we need six every half second, these produce two each, so we will need three of these, right? Two times three is six. So that's how you arrive at that ratio. Uh, with any other ratio as well, it's just pretty much simple math and looking at the recipe. So we're gonna take these and we're just gonna do something-ish along this. I can never, I never, ever, ever get this build right in the first place, except now, what do you know? So we're gonna do three there, and you saw I just quickly copied these. So how did I do that? You select the machine, you choose what recipe you want, and then if you shift right click it, it will make a copy of it. And you can see, when I if I hold shift and just mouse over other machines, it'll highlight this in green, meaning this is what I'm copying from. And if I shift left click, it'll copy to these. Now these are already done, but if I shift left click here, it'll copy to those. So that, and then 
Um, to do it really quickly like I did, if you just dr drag or walk with the shift left click down, it'll just do anything you, you mouse over that can accept that recipe. So it, it's really, really quick to just set um, multiple of the same recipe like that into things. We are going to use fast asserters because we do have them unlocked and it will just make this, you know, much more efficient because they are producing very quickly. So they will need fast asserters to actually work if at full capacity. So we're gonna have copper come along the back here like that. And then we are slowly making, this is why we need circuits. This, this process is so, so strenuous trying to make it this, all these circuits by hand. Now these guys also need iron. So we're gonna have to get iron in here as well. Uh, this can be done in many different ways. Uh, I believe we are going to input iron from the sides. I'm just making this part up as I go because I like to kind of just make stuff off up on the spot. It, it keeps uh, creativity flowing, I think. Um, these are actually output inserters. So if you hit R, um, you can rotate. If you hit Shift R, it'll reverse rotate. Uh, switch is really nice. So we are out of belt. Let's go ahead and make some belt. Uh, actually, with that, let me just very quickly, this is just super quick. Um, as you can see, again, making these gears is quite annoying. So let's let's make some gears. Let's, uh, let's see. Let's cancel these belt, right click them. Don't need those right now. Let's make some gears and I'm gonna make a box. I'm just, cause we have so much iron here that it's not doing anything. Let's put it to use. Let's go ahead and get some gears up and running. That's perfect for power. And this guy is just gonna make gears. He's just gonna make a lot of gears. In fact, we're gonna make another inserter uh, because again, as I mentioned uh, in the last episode, this actually needs, uh, actually for level one assemblers, it is pretty much okay to have one fast inserter. Uh, so let's go ahead and pick up any gears we can because it's quite annoying to make them. So this is going to be our output, which needs to run this way. And then our input, the iron, is going to come here and we are gonna use some undergrounds. Now this is not this is not the best way to do it. Uh, like I said, this is a fairly temporary setup, enough to get us to a point where I can actually build more things without having to stand here for, you know, an hour and crafting all the circuits and stuff. So let's go ahead and make some more power poles because we already have one. Uh, so we're going to just send an iron line down here. Again, not the best thing ever, but more than handcrafting them for sure. And this just shows that, you know, there's more than one way to do everything. Uh, you can do it like this. You could have it output to the side and have the iron in the middle. You could, uh, you know, have it come in some other direction if you want. Uh, typically I would actually have these output to the sides because I would line these up along so like farther down the row. So I would actually have an inserter, like I would have this output the circuits and then have one on the other side outputting and sharing the belt. But for now, I wanted to do something different. So let's see if we can get even a remotely decent power connection here. It's not great. Um, <laughs> it doesn't look great, but it doesn't have to for now. Belt. Let's get some more belt. So this guy combines down. And luckily, he's already in a splitter, so we're just going to split half of this off. Come up here, it doesn't quite line up, but as long as it gets resources, that's what matters. Uh, and then this is gonna come over here, right into the forest. This tree's gonna have to go, sorry guys. Now one thing I do notice uh, when I see people post their new bases or when or people ask questions is in regards to space. Is, um, you know, space, like how, you know, how, how, how do you plan out enough space for stuff? How do you, how do you keep things, you know, organized and, and not all bunched up? And this does come down to uh, planning and preparation, right? Because if a lot of new players will just kind of willy nilly throw stuff down and why are these not getting coal? Excuse me for a second. Oh, no, no inserters, that's fine. Um, they'll kind of just throw stuff down and kind of just pack it in like, okay, we need this and this, and we'll just put it all in one area and then they're out of room. So planning out ahead of time and finding the space for what you need is really important to actually being able to not only keep things organized, but keeping things expandable. Expandability is huge. And 
kind of a, a general rule of thumb I like to have for space is, is you look at it and you say, you know, for this layout in mind that I have, um, or for how much production I think I'm going to need, how much space do I need? You look at it, you think how much you need, you find how much you need, and then double it plus some, right? Because you are always going to need more than you think, and the more space you leave, the more expandability it has. And space is essentially infinite in Factorio uh, for... I mean, not technically, but uh, it does, uh, for, for our purposes, it is pretty much unlimited, right? So giving yourself as much space as possible is really important in planning out which, what you want to do. So we now have some circuits, which will help us immensely with crafting things quicker. You can see this now goes way faster. We don't have to make these circuits by hand. Go ahead and place these guys down. That should be all of them. There we go. And that is our copper, our iron is going well. Now we have circuits, and now we can actually set up some science. We will be able to set up some basic science, however, first, before we can do any green science, we will need to research automation too, because as I mentioned last episode, inserters are going to need assembling machine twos, because they take three ingredients, and the first assembling machines can only craft things with two. And you'll see here that these green science packs do take inserters as well as transport belts. So we're going to find our research path. This is going to require electronics. And I'm going to set up a very temporary little red science build up here before we set up our main one, just to kind of chug out these researches. And uh, to show you guys kind of some makeshift bootstrap builds you can do that will really help you along. So currently we have these two labs. Now there's several different ways you can do this. Um, this is actually, I cannot take credit for this. Uh, this build, but it is a very, very handy way to do things. And this is actually from Anti Elites, who is a speedrunner. And uh, it's very, very uh, fast and efficient and looks good as well. So we take these, if we make these both gears, okay? Remember, red packs take gears and copper. We do that. And then we do something along these lines, if I can remember it, like this, and then like that. And these four become red science. Okay, now let's make some normal inserters. So these gears are going to output here to the middle. They're going to go into boxes. Like that. And then these science machines will pull from these boxes. So these gears will be able to output into here. All four science machines can pull from them. And then we're going to just stick some copper into here. So they will also be able to pull the copper. And then we will just need a couple boxes in the front here to have these science machines go. Now, we could just put this on the iron bus. I probably should have just put it on the iron bus, but I have a ton of iron in my inventory, um, and I would end up just having to move it in like five minutes when I decide I want something down there. So we're going to do it up here, and this will just feed it for quite a long time. And then we can just power here. Actually, I think I'm going to power... We'll just do that, just for symmetry. And then we'll take these four labs, and just very simply, you can do it Pretty much however you want. You could do out the top, out the sides. I'm just going to go out the sides like this. If I can, why, why did that not place? And we are going to output like this. So this is now four labs worth of production, which is double what we did have, and it's automated. And it's automated for a good while until it runs out of something. So I'm going to stick some more iron in here because that will probably be the limitation. There you go. And this guy will just chug out science um, for, for a good while. And there we go. So that's a nice little build. Uh, you know, I, I'll just even blueprint it as well. Boom, there you go. And that will get you going for a, a, a while until you can set up a main build. And that'll just get us through electronics as well as uh, automation two. And let's just check here. We are not quite aggroing these guys. We are very close. We have not found any resources yet. I am suspecting there will be some somewhere around here, though. Usually this is about the distance where RSO will start giving us some resources. So hopefully we do find those. And I think this is a very good stopping point. 34 minutes. Next time we will get science completely set up. That is my goal. Uh, my goal this time was to get smelting set up.
and a little bit of circuit production, which we did achieve. So next episode, look forward to a red and green science build. We will definitely get that done all in next episode. And then we will transition into a better circuit build as well as the dedicated smelters for it. And I may do a little bit of off camera work for that just because it's going to be a matter of placing down blueprints and uh, building over them. Uh, but we can use some blueprints to plan out as well. So I will, I will get all that organized for next time. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and found this helpful. If you have any questions or any other comments, leave them down below and I will do my best to answer them. And if I cannot, then the awesome community will. But until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and do take care.